Well, reloaders and shooters out there, Fortune Cookie 45 LC coming to you from the hot lead zone. And tonight we're going to talk about carbide and sand and how it pertains to reloading. This is a carbide die made by Lee, but all the companies like Lyman and RCBS, Hornady, uh, Forrester, and Redding all make carbide dies. But when, it's, when they say carbide die, they don't mean the whole thing's made out of carbide. Now carbide is a short term for tungsten carbide. But the part that's tungsten carbide is a little ring, a little insert down here where the case goes in. Now tungsten carbide is one of the hardest substances known by man. You could call it artificial diamond. When the brass case is forced through that ring, that ring will size the brass case down to a specification. And this works because you've got a straight wall case. So you got a ring that makes the whole case that dimension as it's being pushed through. Now this does not work for tapered rounds like your rifle rounds because you've got a taper well how is a ring going to be able to resize that case if you got a ring in there that ring is just going to make it straight well that won't work with a tapered case like this six millimeter case all of your rifle rounds are tapered and some pistol rounds are tapered too or similar straight wall cases like 30 carbine has a slight taper but very slight so you can only have a steel die because you can't make the whole thing made out of tungsten carbide inside this die if you did it'd be very expensive so expensive that you wouldn't want to buy it so all your tapered is made of steel because the steel can have an inside taper that will match the case and when you force it in it will resize the case to the pre-fired dimension that you want. But that's why you've got to lubricate it because you've got so much friction there that you won't be able to get the case out if you force it in there without lubrication. So you have to lubricate rifle cases. Not so your tungsten carbide because you've got a straight wall and the carbide is so hard that there's less friction and the friction's only on the inserts so as a case goes through and is pulled out you don't need lubrication. Now you've heard it said that of course you have to clean your cases before you run them into your sizing die. And the reason is because if you have any grit on this brass at all, the grit will cause two bad things to happen. It will scratch the inside of your steel die and then any cases you put in there afterwards will get scratched because you got a scratch die that will transfer that scratch to the brass casing that goes in afterwards. But the grit will also cause scratching of the case that the grit is on. Now what about grit and a carbide die? Well the thing about the carbide die is if you get any grit on the case that grit will not scratch the carbide insert because the carbide insert is harder than the grit. Kind of like artificial diamond. But the grit can scratch the case. Now if any grit gets inside the die on the carbide insert and any more cases go in afterwards you can get scratching of, of succeeding cases because the grit will scratch the case. Now this is fire brass straight back from the range and so you see any grit on that case if you force it into that die the grit will scratch the case. Now let's think about this for a while. So, for example, you just fired six rounds in your double action revolver. And you turn the gun over and you go like this. And those six cases go into your hand. And you throw them 
into a box. Same thing for your single action revolver because you go like this. And you've got six empties in your hand. These empties will never hit the ground. So how are they going to get any grit? You didn't put any grit in your gun. Well, what is grit? Grit is another word for sand. Sand can be big particles or small particles and you call it grit. Sand is silicon dioxide. Silicon is the most common element in the Earth's crust. And sand is an abrasive. By the way, that's why it's so bad on your car paint job when you get bird droppings on your paint. And if the bird droppings dry on your paint, you really got a problem. Because what birds do is they eat lots of dirt and sand and grit because it helps their digestion. So their droppings are full of abrasive sand and grit. If you let bird droppings dry on your car finish and then you try and wipe that off, it's like you might as well be using a piece of sandpaper on your car paint job. Now when smokeless powder fires, smokeless powder is nitrocellulose. There's no way silicon dioxide is used in making gunpowder. Smokeless powder, nitrocellulose, will burn but produces no grit. So there's no grit from firing. If there's no grit from dirt getting on your brass, then this, these cases are dirty and you'll want to clean them. But the nitrocellulose fouling is not abrasive. Now what does this mean? Now in my last Midway order, I just bought a Lee Universal Decapping die. And the, the reason why I bought this is so I can decap my cases before I wet tumble them so that I'll have clean primer pockets. What this will give me is a case that's been decapped but it hasn't been resized, just decapped. So I can run it through my wet tumbler. But for straight wall cases and revolvers that go in, the cases go in your hand and never get any grit on them, and for that matter, auto pistol brass that's on an indoor range that's pretty clean on the floor, is it necessary to clean that brass before you resize it? Because resizing will decap but you'll get the benefit of also resizing the case and then when you wet tumble you'll get a real nice polished finish on a case that doesn't require resizing because you've already resized it. Here's some brass straight from the range and we're told never to resize this because of the fact that grit will scratch your dies and scratch your, your brass. But again if no grit is on this because it comes into your hand and there's no grit from the gunpowder and firing. Is it possible that the fouling from smokeless powder actually acts as a lubricant to help the sizing process? So if I put on my latex gloves or my nitrile gloves and I go ahead and take brass that's straight from the range and go ahead and run that through the carbide sizing die. Notice the lubricity that we get because of the smokeless powder fouling. So there, I have done seven of them. Now just imagine that I've got 500 of these. Now I'm ready to go ahead and wet tumble them and I'll have brass that has already been resized as well as decapped. 
and so all the primer pockets will be clean and I'll be able to go ahead with the next step. But to illustrate what we're talking about here, notice that I have here some brass casings that are already wet tumbled. And by the way, look at the nice finish on those. This is six months ago that I tumbled these. And these are as shiny as when they were dried off. No water spots. If you rinse the wet tumbled brass well and let it dry well, the brass will look good. I'll just go ahead and fish some of those out and you can see how nice that brass looks. Now what I'll do is take some of this tumbled brass and go ahead and resize it in the same die that we just resized the dirty brass. If any grit got inside this die, we're going to scratch this case. Once again, the grit cannot scratch the carbide. So we'll go ahead and do that. There's one. Here's two. We'll just do three of the brass ones and three of the nickel ones. There we go. Now let's inspect these. First I've got to focus. I don't see any scratches on those. Here are the nickel ones. And I don't see any scratches on them either. Get that in focus. There you go. And if I did 200, 300, 500 of these, you wouldn't see any scratches on them either. By the way, I'd like to show you my 45 Colt Brass from six months ago, wet tumbled, and you'll see that those cases are well finished, no water spots. Once again, we rinse the cases off very well and dry them very well, and if you do that, your cases will look good indefinitely. This is at least six months old. Now notice I have here 44 Magnum Brass, a whole box full of it that I brought back from the range today and none of that hit the ground so I can actually look at this as being gritless brass, no sand. It can be resized and then decapped in the resizing process before I wet tumble them. Fortune Cookie 45LC coming to you from the Hot Lead Zone. Bye for now.